question. Right, so if you have read and understood, considering a surgical pathology patient, kindly tell me. Okay. Um, how would your answer be to the patient? Okay, I'm going to tell the patient that the histology, the sample that was taken during the surgery, shows that he has a problem in the, in the, in the bowel, in this large bowel. There is an inflammation in the large bowel. There is abnormal. A small, small pocket along his large bowel, which has, has got an infected. And then there's also presence of tissue that is usually found in the internal lining of this uh, womb inside the bowel, which is located in an abnormal uh, position. Okay. Uh, right. How common is it, or what are the theories behind uh, this condition? Can you okay. For for endometriosis, there is a retrograde, uh, uh, retrograde uh, menstruation. Okay. It's one of the theory that is responsible. Then there is also a metaplastic uh, theory. It's also one of the... Yes. And then there is also benign metastatic uh, theory as one of the theories responsible for endometriosis. Okay. What is the pathogenesis behind this condition? The pathogenesis is there is presence of um, yes. The, if you can classify it according to congenital and acquired, and uh, help me understand how it occurs. Okay, the the congenital one is when there is an abnormal uh, presence of uh, endometrial uh, lining in abnormal location. So why for the acquired one is when this occurs in a patient after. Um, following conditions like a retrograde uh, ejaculation or meta or um, benign metastatic uh, uh, theory causes the migration of the endometrial lining to a distant place where the endometrial lining now starts uh, um, causing uh, um, dysfunction in the patient. Yes, but um, in this condition, like in this case. Uh, since it's diverticulitis, so large colon is involved. So what happens that because of chronic constipation or because yes, of because, chronic aging? Yes. Okay. Because of the chronic uh, constipation in the patient and then low uh, content in the bowel, there is increase in the intraluminal pressure. Intraluminal pressure, yes. What happens? So this forces uh, um, because out to herniate. So I need to during yes. the fascia recti wall around the tenia coli. Yes. So this as pouching then get uh, become bigger, then get the as as pouching then get infected to cause uh, diverticulitis in the patient. Yes. Okay. Right. What are the what are the complications that can occur as a result of this condition? And um, there can be infection, diverticulitis. There can be bleeding. Then there yes. could be abscess formation or fistula formation. Yes. Even perforation then occur. And perforation. Okay. Uh, right. Can you tell me how this infection can uh, occurs or why infection occurs in this condition? If you um, can help me understand the mechanism behind it. The, the infection occurs due to there will be um, obstruction of the, uh, the outer pattern that is formed, then this is going to lead to inflammation, and then there, there will be multiplication of the uh, organism inside the outer pattern, which is going to cause infection. And this will subsequently lead to abscess uh, formation around the paracolon. Okay. 
how this uh, how this neutro how these neutrophils they migrate when infection is present okay there will be a uh, rolling of yes. the neutrophils then they yes. will adhere to the endothelial lining of the vessel then there yes. will be trans uh, migration through the uh, vascular wall then they will become a static uh, method we get them to where the infection is where okay. they will now cause a phagocytosis of the bacteria can you suggest some investigations with the help of which this condition can be diagnosed? Okay, the um, I want to do a CT. Yes. Uh, of the abdomen uh, colonoscopy can also be helpful. Then okay. uh, blood count will also be helpful. Right. Uh, okay. Right. What about rigid sigmoidoscopy? Would that be useful? Yes. Uh, yes. The rigid sigmoidoscopy. Okay, considering that the patient is uh, suffering from diverticulitis, can you tell me how would you classify diverticulitis? Okay, I'm going to use the ancient classification. There is a paracolic uh, abscess formation, which is class one. Class two is when there is a pelvic abscess. Then class okay. three is when there is prolent peritonitis, while class four is when there is fecalent peritonitis. All right, and um, okay, superlent. How should this condition be managed? The condition, the, the, the patient should be placed on an MPO and investigation will be done, a uh, full block count, electrolyte and creatinine. Then patient will be placed on parental antibiotics and uh, analgesics and also uh, NG tube will be passed to decompress the bowel. If these ones didn't have the patient, patient is an uh, abscess formation, there can be percutaneous drainage of the abscess under ultrasound guidance. Then the uh, surgery can also be done, and the various options include the uh, Ashman procedure, uh, uh, doing the uh, diverting uh, colostomy can also be done, and then patient can also have a colectomy, can also be done. Okay, this patient, you've operated, you've managed, patient had perforation. So you've done the Hartman's procedure on the patient. And then after a few days, patient comes back to you, patient is suffering from fever. You suspect that there is collection of um, pus. Uh, why do you think patient has uh, developed infection in this condition? The... There can be and uh, patients develop infection due to there can be um progression of the disease condition. There are uh, some paracodic abscess can see form. Then there can be uh, abscess that has collected or during the uh, uh, laparotomy enough and uh, peritoneal uh, toileting was not done. So there is yes. still some kind of infection present in the patient. Yes. And then there can also be um leakage of the Ashman pouch causing a soilage of the peritoneum. Okay, and the patient is suffering from endometriosis as well. So what's the role of this condition? Okay, the endometriosis can cause uh, further bleeding into the peritoneum, then which can get uh, infected and then causing uh, peritonitis in the patient. Yes, okay. Uh, would you or would you not treat the patient with antibiotic? I'm going to treat the patient with antibiotics. Okay, according to the uh, trust guidelines. Okay, yes, uh, right. Can you please tell me uh, what is the significance of knowing uh, that patient has endometriosis? The significance of the endometriosis is um, it will also cause uh, pain in the patient and the pain could either result from the bleeding uh, of the... And something else, endometriosis is associated with malignancy. Then, yes, it's also associated with uh, ovarian malignancy. Zaya in females that have endometriosis compared to those that don't have endometriosis. Yes, so overall rate, risk factor, it's a, one of the risk factors. All right. Right, this patient with diverticulitis and endometriosis, how would the intraperitoneal inter picture would be? If you have opened the patient, what would you see? Yes, I can see the presence of a hemorrhagic fluid in the peritoneum as a result of a bleeding from the 
endometriosis that she has in the abdomen. Yes, that would be burn powder, dark, dark blue, that, black, yes, chocolate blue black. kind of. Yes. All right. Good. All right. Thank you. Just I want to request you to revise those um, theories. Okay. Can you help me to read this, please? Image. Okay. It says gastron gastroenterologist, so it's in somewhere in intestine, but may not be in yeah, somewhere in the large intestine. So Sorry. what do you see? What is this? I can see some area of an uh, hyperemic uh, area, and okay. then there is also area of uh, tissue necrosis yes. uh, surrounding the uh, surrounded by the hyperemic area. Okay, right. Good. Could be uh, could, what could this be? This could I don't know more. Could be um uh, engulfed uh, epithelial uh, epi uh could be engulfed. What is this? Epi endometrial endometrial tissue. Yes. Okay. Good. Thanks. Thank you. My question is, uh, what is the indication of colonoscopy in diverticulitis? Very important. Yes, please, Dr. Kulade. Yes, the, the colonoscopy is to make uh, the diagnosis of uh, uh, the diverticulosis. One will be able to see the aspartine of the of the diverticulosis in the, in the patient. And then there is no inflammation. If there is diverticulitis, may not be that uh, 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 important because of the pain and the abdominal discomfort that the patient is having. Doing a rigid sigmoidoscopy may be better than doing a colonoscopy, colonoscopy in the patient. Yes, I don't but, think but colonoscopy acute, would. Yes, please. But in acute diverticulitis, it can perforate. So yes. we can't do uh, sigmoidoscopy, rigid, or colonoscopy in the acute diverticulitis. When the patient is settled, then we can do this. In that condition, you'll do the chest <laughs> X-ray, uh, the supine abdominal X-ray. Yes. Or, or maybe barium CT. studies. Barium enema you can give or the CT abdomen. Otherwise, colonoscopy contraindicated in acute diabetic diabetes condition. Yes. Especially in the condition, in the case of pain, severe pain, you can't do it. Good. Thank you.